Well, for more, let's speak to James Cohen, Emeritus Professor of American Studies at Sorbonne Nouvelle University. Hello to you, James. Oh. Um, what were your main takeaways from that first presidential debate? Mm, well, um, I think that everybody is saying what's uh, already been announced, and within Democratic ranks, it's pretty clear that nobody was very happy with the performance of, of Biden. Uh, it's concerning. Uh, nonetheless, I think you can say that in terms of substance, there's a lot more on the Democratic side than on the Trump side. Trump was uh, full of uh, bombast and uh, lies and uh, an un sort of an uncontrolled tidal wave of uh, insults also that he threw at, at Biden, uh, making it difficult to respond point by point. Uh, there was no way to do so. Um, uh, the, the, the insults are a part, a standard part of politics anywhere in the world. Well, but the lies, do Trump you Trump has think? made that more of a standard feature. More, more, more yeah. But uh, the mudslinging, we'll see that time and again. But the, the, the lies, should CNN have had fact-checking at the debate? Yeah, it's not easy to do so instantaneously, right. but there should have been something. Because given the, the, the well-known fact, <laughs> not, a fake, uh, not a piece of fake news that the, the Trump invents stuff and is full of lies, maybe there should have been something on the screen in indicating that uh, that would have helped. Uh, but um, after the debate, that was the format. Yeah, right. And the after the debate in Atlanta, there's, of course, going to be some spin about both candidates' performances. Mm -hmm. But what we've seen in the hours that come, more and more Democrats posing questions mm -hmm. about why is Joe Biden our man? Mm -hmm. I think that that, uh, that debate is going to have to happen. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that it's not happening. Uh, uh, it's an open secret. It's not even a secret at all that <clears throat> this discussion is, is happening as a result of last night's debate. Uh, nonetheless, I would uh, continue to, uh, to say that um, in terms of substance, uh, the, the Democrats have it all over the Republicans. Uh, and in terms of the model of society that they're defending, uh, Trump wants to dismantle everything. He wants to dismantle all forms of regulation. He wants to uh, give uh, billionaires more tax cuts. Uh, he, he, he doesn't believe in using the state for social purposes. Uh, on the Democratic side, there, there, there is much more of a project. Uh, and, uh, and also a uh, defense of democratic institutions, which is not the case on the Republican side, because uh, the Republicans now have a, a playbook. The Heritage Foundation has written them a 900-page playbook, uh, giving them strategies to give uh, the president, if Trump is reelected, much more authority even than the president already has uh, to steer clear of the uh, federal bureaucracy and to do exactly as he pleases. Yeah, well, it was sort of a semi-dictator. Let's talk about that more in a moment. Mm -hmm. But first, staying with the Democrats, mm -hmm. Biden is not the official candidate yet. Uh, Should Democrats pivot? Uh, right. Well, that would take <clears throat> lots of pivoting between now and the convention in Chicago in the month of August. Um, I can't speculate about that. I'm not qualified to say. Uh, for the moment, uh, he's the one who has to decide. Um, uh, he's probably not going to step aside. Uh, there would have to be a very strong movement within the Democrats to, to get him to do so. I can't quite see that happening because the last time there was a, a Democratic candidate or any candidate who uh, uh, withdrew in the middle of a race uh, instead of uh, being a candidate for his own re-election, that was the case of Lyndon Johnson in 1968, that didn't turn out well for the Democrats. So that's probably not a great strategy unless you really have no other recourse. I can't, as of today, I can't see it happening. Right. And, and back to what you were saying about the Republican playbook, if uh, Donald Trump does win the White House, as polls look like he will do. Well, what? things yeah. could change. Yeah. There are a few swing states where <laughs> things could still swing. Well, so, yeah, and then there's another debate to come as mm -hmm. well. Um, what are some of those overhauls that his team is outlining on U.S. institutions, on political appointees? Uh, what I see is that he wants to get rid of as many um, um, career civil servants as he can. Uh, in, in particular, in the Office of Management and Budget, he, he, he wants to get rid of as many uh, appointed officials who are appointed for, for life or, for, for, or uh, appointed uh, uh, from, uh, out of competence, and he wants to turn them into the kind of personnel that you can fire at will and bring in political loyalists. That's, that's the Essentially, main. yes men. Yes men, that's what, uh, uh, which would be disastrous in a number of domains where uh, if you're a yes man, you don't have uh, technical answers about how to solve problems. 